Hello, welcome to my craft room and welcome to day two of New Catalogue Launch Week. And today I'm really excited to be sharing with you the Blossoms in Bloom bundle, which you can find on page 51 of your catalogue. I hope your catalogue has arrived. If it hasn't, then you can still find Blossoms in Bloom on my website and the address is there at the top of my grid paper. So Blossoms in Bloom bundle is the Blossoms in Bloom stamp set and the many layered Blossoms dies. You can get them both individually, you don't have to buy them both, but if you do choose to get them both, then you get 10% off, which is always great. You can see that the stamp set is one which has got images and words, and the words are really useful ones. There's happy birthday, thinking of you, thank you, get well soon, as well as these very pretty watercolour style floral images. If you don't have many stamps, then it's a great set because you've got those words as well. And if you don't have any stamps yet, it would be a perfect first set to buy because you can do so much with it. It's one of the distinctive stamp sets, and that means that the stamps are manufactured in such a way that they pick up varying amounts of ink and when you stamp you get darker areas and lighter areas just by normal inking and stamping and I'm hoping that you can see that on here. You'll also be able to see it on my samples later. The stamps are photopolymer, that means they're see-through so you can see exactly where you're going to be stamping. The dies are two large and four small dies and you have two of each. Um, this one is an outline and this one cuts a wider version of the same shape and image so you can see that you've got large flowers and small flowers and some leaves and I will show you these cut out in just a moment. Um, you've got outlined small flowers and the other flowers which have got a broader outline to them when they're cut and these flowers match the small flowers on the dies and the dies will also cut out your stamped images. Here are the smaller flowers um, and here are the larger flowers which will be cut out by the large flowers on the dies. Uh, if you do decide to stamp your die cuts, it's probably easiest to cut them first and to then stamp them afterwards. Um, it's quite an, an artistic sort of set of stamps and dies, so you don't get an exact match up, but you will be able to stamp onto your die cut because the stamps are see-through, so you'll be able to see exactly where your ink is going to go. Let me show you those actually stamped out and die cut. So here are the stamped images. You've got the flowers that I've talked about. Um, you've got three leaves and then you've got this little one here which could be a really useful infill or it can be a flower centre stamped multiple or single times. And this one here with the spots is a lovely flower centre for those larger flowers, but you could also use it again to fill in spaces or to give you some background around your flowers. And the words are in capital letters, but in a font which looks almost hand-drawn. It's very slightly regular, which gives it some charm. When you cut using the dies, and I hope you can see this because I've cut this in some very bright contrasting colours, the outline dies give you what has been cut in blue here so you can see you've got really really fine detail there just an outline of all those flowers and leaves and then the other large die cuts the same shape on the outside but on the inside it cuts further in so you get almost shading and then what you can see here is pink is actually my base card peeking through so these are open in the center they layer up really easily they're very um accurately cut so they, they layer together very simply and the small flowers here uh, work in exactly the same way. I highly recommend that you back your card with some adhesive sheet before you do your die cutting. These have been out of the catalogue for a while but they're now back in um, on the adhesives page and all you do is you peel off one of the backing papers on the adhesive sheet and place your card on top of the adhesive. You then die cut it and then you peel off the backing paper and then your die cut has got sticky all over the back. Uh, you can imagine, particularly with this blue die cut, that sticking that in place using any other kind of glue is going to be very time consuming and awkward. But with the double sided um, adhesive sheet, it's an absolute dream to do. Let me show you some projects that I've made with the Blooms in Blossom in Bloom bundle. I'm starting off with one which is just some simple stamping. I've used the small flowers and the small leaf and I've just stamped all over the background here. But that area in the centre was kept clear with a really simple masking technique. 
I used my tailored tag punch to punch out a piece of post-it note and made sure that I got some of the sticky part of the post-it note. And before I started stamping, I stuck this in the centre of my card, then I stamped all round it, including over the edges, and then peeled it off to reveal an area with no stamping, which is where I could put my sentiment. The colours I've used here, the flowers are Mango Melody, the leaves are Granny Apple Green and the centres are done with Soft Suede. Now I did stamp off once with this. What that means is that you're putting down less ink when you stamp. You ink your stamp, you stamp it off on scrap paper or some grid paper and then you stamp onto your project. And then for each flower centre I did exactly the same. I inked it, I stamped it off and then I stamped onto my project. And that means that that brown ink is just a little bit paler and softer which I felt worked better. The card base is Granny Apple Green and the layer there is Soft Suede so I've picked up the same colours as I used in the ink. And then on the inside I used a similar masking technique except this time I masked off the bottom of my liner. So I just put post-it notes down all the way across. You might need a couple of them. Then I stamped and then I removed my post-it notes, which gave me that nice sharp edge there to my stamping. So that's my Get Well Soon card. Another one which just uses simple uh, stamping, but with a little bit of a technique involved as well, is this Thinking of You card. I've stamped the large flower image and then before I stamped, I've added some darker ink in the center and I will show you how I did that. So I've got my stamp mounted on a block here. It is quite a large stamp. And so instead of taking the stamp to my ink pad, as I normally would, I'm taking my ink pad to the stamp and I'm just gonna tap all over to get the ink on there. This is Seaside Spray, which is a nice soft blue. And then I'm going to take my darker blue, which is Pacific Point, and I'm going to take a sponge dauber, and I'm just going to pick up some ink using the dauber, and then with a straight up and down motion, just dab it around the center of my flowers. I'm not trying to be really exact here. I'm not trying to get each flower the same as the others. These are flower images that look as if they've been watercolored, so I think it's nice to not try and be too precise. Before I stamp, I'm going to pop a foam mat um, underneath where I'm working. These photopolymer stamps have no sponge on them and you get a much better image, particularly on the larger stamps, if you have something with a little bit of squidge underneath where you're stamping. I always put it underneath my grid paper and then if I get ink on the mat, it won't transfer onto the next part of my project. So I put some card down and because this stamp's been sitting here a little while now, I'm just going to breathe on it so the moisture in my breath will reactivate the ink. You could maybe hear me hoeing on my stamp there. And if I stamp down, you may even see the ink transferring. Although it's a large stamp, it stamps really nicely. And that is your multicoloured flower. Very, very easy to do. So bring back the finished card. Now you know how I stamped the flowers. Um, I stamped the centres with Daffodil Delight ink and this is Mint Macaron here and then my card base is Seaside Spray with the blue layer being the same Pacific Point card as I used with the ink here and here. And on the inside I've just stamped the smaller flower with the same colours. So thinking of you card, I don't know about you, I'm sending a lot of those cards at the moment. The next card to show you has got the die cutting on it and I'm just going to remove that foam mat there we go now things are sitting nice and flat I've used very vibrant colors here um, and I've die cut the outline in Merry Merlot and then the slightly wider dies in the new color magenta madness and I've mounted it on our new bumblebee card which is an absolutely beautiful warm golden yellow um, again, I used adhesive sheet on the back of these, which meant that they stuck down really easily. And I'm hoping you can see on the smaller areas, I die cut the small flowers, I stuck them together, and then I've attached them just at the center so that the petals can go up and look like a 3D flower. I've put one of the, uh, what are they called? Gilded gems in the center of these as well. And then I've used a happy birthday stamp. And inside, um, I've just attached another die cut there. So although it looks quite complicated, it's really just some die cut pieces attached together. Uh, and these dies do cut absolutely beautifully, I must say.
The last card I have to show you also uses the dies, but this time I've brought in a watercolouring technique. I cut just the outline die out of watercolour paper. Our watercolour paper is absolutely beautiful. It's textured, but it's not too bumpy a texture, which means that you can stamp on it if you want to, um, and it doesn't affect the way the image prints. But this time I've just used a die cut. I die cut it out of watercolour paper, again with the adhesive sheet on the back, and then I've coloured it using um, a water brush and uh, ink from the ink pad and I'll just show you how I did that. I've used my aqua painter because I've had one from before. These have been discontinued but instead Stamping Up have now got the water painters uh, which actually work out at a much better price than the aqua painters did. So I encourage you to look at those. They're a brush on the end a paintbrush and then in here in the reservoir you just fill it up from the tap with tap water and it allows you to use all your water-based inks uh, to colour in. It's a lovely tool to have. So I'll show you how I did that. I've got um, a couple of flowers here that I die cut out of the watercolour paper and I've got uh, my Melon Mambo ink pad here and I'm just squeezing it. I don't know if you can see between my fingers and my thumbs so I'm pressing the ink pad down onto the inside of the lid there. If you have the new style ink pads, um, which some of mine are, I've still got some of the old ones, for some reason the lid on these is really quite hard and I find that I can generate more pressure with my thumb so I turn them upside down and press them like that and then that will put some of the ink onto the inside of the lid. So if you've got the new style ink pads that look like this then that is the way to get your ink on the ink pad lid. You can of course press the ink pad itself onto a clear block and use that as a palette but definitely don't put a wet paintbrush onto your ink pad because what will happen is you will just dilute the ink that's on there and then next time you stamp it won't be the colour you're expecting. So I just pick up some ink with my paintbrush, I can scribble it on there to check the colour and then I just paint across here. Now if you do that it will be quite vibrant, if you keep scribbling with a paintbrush it will get paler and paler and if you want your colours to blend a little bit more like true watercolour then just wet the paper first and then pick up your colour and add it and it, the paint or ink I should say flows much better that way and if you want to blend colours or mix colours you'll find that you get a really nice finish that way. Let that dry thoroughly before you try to stick it down otherwise that adhesive sheet won't be able to do its job. And then when you bring your card in, you can hopefully see what I've done here. So I used Melon Mambo on the flowers. I used Gorgeous Grape on the smaller flowers. The leaves are uh, Granny Apple Green and Garden Green. And the centres of the flowers are Mango Melody. Um, and I've got a little bit of, of colour blending going on here, which I really like. I popped some pearls in the centre of the flowers. And this is some of the new ribbon in Magenta Madness. And inside... I've just stamped that little flower. So again, quite a quick card to come together, but with lots of interest to it, uh, and always fun, I think, to use an inky technique. Let me put all the cards here now for you to see. I'm just gonna protect that inky area with a little bit of card, there we go. So that's the two with the die cuts. And I'll move those up, and I'll show you the two that were just the stamping. There we go, get those all in shot for you. I don't think I can get them all in at the same time. So I really hope you'll be tempted by the Blossoms in Bloom bundle. Um, the ideas just keep flowing as I use this. It's a fantastic bundle um, and I know you're gonna love using it. I look forward very much to seeing you again here tomorrow um, for day three, uh, when I can actually show you the inside of the catalog and we're gonna do a quick catalog tour. So thank you for joining me and happy crafting.